Pisces. Welcome to your October 2018 tarot reading. My name is Serafina Safi and I present Enchanted Mirror Tarot. Now I have strong Pisces placements. I was born February the 21st so I'm a first decan Pisces. In Vedic astrology and 13 signs astrology I'm considered an Aquarius but I feel like I have very strong Pisces placement and I feel like Pisces really describes me more. Um, I have a Pisces Sun and a Pisces Ascendant, a Pisces Venus, and a Pisces Mars. So I'm a quadruple Pisces. And basically what's been going on with me, because this might help you, like where I presently am, I've been thinking a lot about redecorating my house. I've been like this fantasy land, like I didn't want to do anything. I just keep going on Amazon and looking at like different techniques. I think I might do a glitter wall. <laughs> and then I was kind of thinking about putting like um, dollar store mirrors all over my ceiling. I thought that would be cool. And I've just been daydreaming and fantasizing financially. Um, I'm currently having a really hard time, but I know that October I am going to be financially prosperous because I have already, I already have two paychecks scheduled and I know what they're going to be and it's like quadruple what I normally make a month. Um, I know September was bad. <laughs> like really bad uh, for me so I don't know about you but yeah September was hard it was hard financially and it was hard relationship I don't know why but lately I have been really mean to people I have I have people that are trying to get with me and I've been like kind of mean to them which I'm not being very empathic, so I don't know if that's happening to you as well. Um, but like I said, I have very strong Pisces placement, and I think before we even read tarot, if I tell what's going on with me, it might help you to relate. And if you relate to this, then you know that this reading is for you. But if you don't relate to this, you know that maybe this isn't for you. So, um, yeah, I in September I had a lot of a lot of people coming to me and I've kind of been mean to them I lost I lost a few um, I lost an Aries but I gained an Aries so I lost an Aries but I gained an Aries and then I was seeing a Leo but he kind of got on my nerves and I'm done with him uh, and then I have two Capricorns that disappointed me they helped me out, but they lied to me. Both of them lied. I, I caught both of them lying. So if you're dealing with a Capricorn, they could be lying to you. I've always had Capricorns around me my whole life. It's always been very intimate with Capricorns, and Sagittarius have always been that thorn in my side. <laughs> I was born to a Capricorn. My mother was a Capricorn. And my sister was a Sagittarius. And for me, um, all of my lessons, my hard lessons have dealt with Sagittariuses. And it always seems to be very hurtful, but it always propels me to the next level. Like I learn and I grow from it. Um, I was raised by my grandparents. My mother raised my sister. So there was like this, this uh, rivalry. And the cool thing about Sagittarius is Pisces and Sagittarius are the two signs ruled by Jupiter. Uh, Pisces is co-ruled by Neptune and Sagittarius is only ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. That's why a lot of Sagittariuses like to gamble. Um, but yeah, so we're both co-ruled by Jupiter which is the planet of luck and we're also both mutable signs which means that we end a season so we kind of go with the flow. So we have a lot in common but they're fire and we're water and elementally that doesn't mesh. Um, fire boils water and water puts out fire so they don't mesh. So I always 
find it like I become friends with Sagittarius's but I just can't connect with them they're the philosophers and as a Pisces we're the dreamers and there's a 13th sign I, I don't even want to try to pronounce this like Ophili Ophilicus it's November the 29th. Well, my sister was born that day. And I went back, and there have been quite a few Sagittariuses in my life, other than my sister. And they always seem to inhi like inhibit me and bring me my painful lessons. Um, so my sister was born November the 29th. And then I had this girl in high school. Um, her name was Shauna and she like followed me around everywhere and I didn't really want to be her friend and <laughs> she was born November the 29th too and she introduced me to my first psychopath uh, who really hurt me but who taught me a lot and grew me and took me it took me out of college and gave me life life lessons instead of college lessons um, so she really changed my life and then I was dating another psychopath and I knew he was a psychopath. He was crazy. He was freaking, he was nuts. Um, he was an Aries. And November the 29th, oh, that's another thing. My first psychopath is married to a Sagittarius born November the 29th. It's always the 29th of November, every single one. Um, yeah, he, he left me for this girl born November 29th, but it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because he was awful. He was awful. He was a total psychopath. And I mean, it was clear, like, it was, I only understand like how I didn't know. <laughs> like, it was textbook. Uh, he was a Libra. And yeah, he, uh, she was born November the 29th so I don't know if this is just my karma or if this if any Pisces that Venus and Pisces might relate to this but yeah so he was a total psychopath and he married like we were still together <laughs> we never broke up and he married her like he and I we never like broke up he just I got the silent treatment and then I found out he was married. Like there was a big wedding and everything. And we were together for seven years. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. Um, but I haven't talked to him since and I never will. But yeah, we were still together and he just disappeared. And the next thing I know, he had a wedding in the back of his grandmother's house and we were together for seven years. Um, so yeah, he was crazy. <laughs> insane um, so obviously that broke us up and then my newest psychopath he really changed my life I quit smoking um, my, my life completely changed and I, it brought me to tarot and it brought me to researching narcissists and psychopaths and learning about my past and realizing that it wasn't my fault that um, yeah they were just crazy <laughs> no, I was saying you know um, I was just highly empathic I knew that there was something weird like my intuition but then I was like don't be mean you don't want to be mean like intuition I, I knew that there was something off but I didn't want to be mean about it um, so yeah my newest one was an Aries and he actually moved 10 hours away a, a 10 hour drive from where we live to be with a Sagittarius born November the 29th who was mean and then he ended up dying and I think like I did this seance and he told me that she murdered him but he lied a lot so I don't know if I could really even believe him is like his spirit because he could just be lying to start shit you know so, so I don't know but yeah I had the seance he came saw me and he said that he was murdered but I don't even want to tell anybody like how he told me he was murdered because he was like kind of freaky um I found out that he was bisexual um but yeah, that's, he told me that he was, that's how he was murdered. Um, and then they tried to cover it up. That's what he told me. I, I don't know. His, his name was Kyle. <laughs> you know. But let's get on with your reading. 
what is the central theme of Pisces reading? What is the central theme of Pisces reading? Harmony. Harmony. I see you daydreaming. I see a lot of peace. Uh, a lot of beauty. There's romance here. October for Pisces. Oh, this is good. Wow. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> and that's all the story I have. I'll look to see after I'm done with this. But I think, I feel. One more came out. Okay, two. This one wants to be seen. Oh, three, four. Okay. All right. Oh, it wants to go this way. Okay, so how do you want to go? You want to go like that? All right, you want to go like that? You, you okay. All right, so... Even though I went through the past. No. This is what's to come. So I see emotional fulfillment. There's a completion here. There's the happy family. It's beautiful. It's emotional. I see a cut in communication. And there's conflict here. I see you reaping a harvest. Financially, you're very well off in October. Financially, you're excellent. And I see you like having this emotional attachment to money. And you're reaping the harvest. A relationship may be cut off. There's, a, there's like a cut in communication with a relationship. It could have been with a Leo. I see you having a lot of options. A lot of good things are coming to you. You have um, plenty of, lots of like emotions and money. It's all coming to you and you're very grateful. You're very thankful for this and you're giving praise and blessings to, to God. You're like, thank you. Thank you, God. Like the universe, the thank you universe. You're bringing me good things. But I see emotional manipulation here. There's a, there's like a master emotional ma manipulator. And that is us. That is Pisces. That's Pisces energy. It's the king of cups in the reverse. But I just want to tell you that he's the one I'm like, do you want to go this way or that way? Because I couldn't feel the way that he wanted to go. So he could be in the upright as well. And in, in the upright, he is in full control of his emotions. In the reverse, and this could be a she too, just because I'm saying he, it, it's gender neutral. It's just a very strong, powerful energy of somebody who either manipulates emotions or this is somebody who's in full control of their emotions, but manipulates others. There we go. That, because it was on the side, this person's in full control of his um, their emotion, but they manipulate other people's emotions. I see them being very stable, an excellent leader, father figure. This is the sign of Aries. It's the emperor. So we have the King of Cups and then we have the Emperor. Those are very strong energies, very powerful energies, very masculine energies. And then we have Judgment in the reverse. So I see, and then we have Death in the reverse. So you're holding on to something. This is what's hindering you or us because I'm Pisces. This is what's hindering us. Uh, could have been a Scorpio or an Aries in the past. 
and it's hindering us. We're obsessed with it. And that causes us to be unable to move on, unable to reach the completion, unable to graduate and learn this lesson. It blocks us. And we're doing it to ourselves. But we have a choice. We can choose to let go, to let what needs to die, die. What needs to be left in the past, in the past. And if we do, then we reach the completion. We climb, we face our karma. There's balancing, there's temperance, regrouping, and we're able to move forward. We have the light at the end of the tunnel. We're able to rise up from the ashes as the phoenix, reborn and more powerful than ever in November. It's our choice. We are, we have the ability to be very strong and stable. I see financial stability in October. I see hard work paying off, relationships. We have a choice. If we stay in the past, we hinder our future. If we release the past, then we're able to complete the journey and we're able to stand in our power and move forward into November, into when Venus descends, the Inanna's descent in Sumeria. We're able to conquer that. But I don't see a lot of conflict here. There's not any conflict. There's harmony, there's harmony. And ultimately, we get a light at the end of the tunnel. We get a way out. We escape the darkness and we shed light onto the darkness and all of the things that were in the shadow come out to the light. And we get the completion, we get the emotional fulfillment, we get the happy family. It's our choice. There's a lot of sevens here. And sevens are all about choices. So we have a choice. We're not victims of circumstance. We're masters of our own destiny. Well, thank you so much, Pisces.